Hello, my name is Mike Minear, and in this video, myself, Morgan Bulkley, and Rhett Ogden are going to cover the mechanics that differ from the Game Officials Handbook for the State of Utah as of July 2023. In the State of Utah, we only have two approved mechanics that differ from the Game Officials Manual. These are the back judge halfway mechanic, which Morgan Bulkley will cover, and wing switching positions at halftime, which will be covered by Red Ogden. This is Morgan Bulkley, and I will be discussing the back, ju back judge halfway goal line mechanic. This was approved as an optional mechanic by the Joint Board in July 2023. The rationale for why this was approved was it allows for improved goal line coverage. It allows the line judge and the head linesman to remain in their usual mechanics longer rather than going into goal line mechanic. It allows for improved coverage of other threats on the field, the sideline and the line to gain. The great majority of back judges were currently using some form of this mechanic and as a joint board we wanted to make sure that everyone was using a similar mechanic. The approved halfway mechanic is this. Starting at their opponent's 20 yard line until the 10 yard line, the back judge will communicate to the wings that the halfway mechanic is being used. I used straightening my arm and pointing or chopping down at half of my arm. The back judge lines up in the middle of the field, halfway in the end zone. All other positions maintain their same initial positioning. Once the ball is snapped on all runs and passes in the field of play when the end line is not threatened, the back judge steps up and assumes coverage of the goal line. When the end line is threatened, the head linesman and the line judge assume coverage of the goal line and the back judge has coverage over the end line. This is an optional mechanic. If it is not used, the default mechanic is the goal line mechanic found in the officiating manual. The communication of goal line responsibilities must be communicated between the wings and the back, uh, back judge on every play that the goal line is threatened. Goal line coverage needs to be a primary topic of discussion during the pregame. Let's look at a few plays where this mechanic is used. In this play, the back judge is in halfway mechanic and has, in, has indicated to both wings that they are in the halfway mechanic. The back judge is halfway in the goal line. On this play, the back judge reads that it is a pass in the field of play and steps up and assumes coverage of the goal line. On this play again, on a snap from the 15 yard line, the back judge communicates to the wing officials that the halfway mechanic is being used. For the quarterback run, the back judge steps up to the goal line and has coverage of the goal line. On this play, the back judge reads that the end line is threatened. He backs up to the end line and assumes coverage of the end line and is in position to rule on this play. This play illustrates great communication between the back judge and the head linesman. The back judge is in halfway mechanic. He reads that it is a run and steps up to the goal line, allowing the head linesman to cover his sideline, which is threatened on this play. Even though the runner ends up in the end zone, the head linesman rules that he stepped out short of the goal line. This play illustrates the importance of the back judge during the halfway mechanic of reading the play correctly 
and assuming coverage of the goal line when it is his responsibility. This is a run. The back judge and halfway mechanic should step up to the goal line. On this play, the back judge is not in halfway mechanic when the snap is from the 19 yard line. And he fails to realize until it is too late that the end line is threatened and he is not in the best position. Had he been in halfway mechanic, he may have been able to be in a better position to rule on this tight play at the end line. Hello, my name is Rhett Ogden. I'm going to be covering a simple yet important procedure about having the head linesman and the line judge switch positions at halftime. This is a requirement by the Utah High School Activities Association. However, it is not covered in the National Federation of High School Officials Handbook. Therefore, we feel it important for all officials to know and understand the mechanic. So it's important to have a, a training video to discuss this. This is a requirement for all varsity level football games. The number one rule to remember and most important thing regarding switching positions at halftime for the head linesman and the line judge is that the position you are assigned to work in Arbiter is your position for reference during the entire game. Meaning if you are assigned as the head linesman, you will be known as the head linesman throughout the game, regardless of the sideline you're working or the half. If you are the line judge, you will be known as the line judge throughout the whole game. Now referees, this is important, important for your foul reporting purposes. Be sure you know each of your wings position and refer to them in the same position the entire game, including your foul report at the conclusion of the game. Be sure you don't switch their positions when they switch sides, but keep them the same designated position throughout the entire game. It's also important referees to go over this with your foul reporters. Be sure that your game foul reporter keeps them in the same position all game when recording the fouls, regardless of what side they are on. A few remembers when switching at halftime. It's a good practice to introduce yourself to the coach. Let him or her know that you're there to work hard and if they need anything to come find you. We should do this at the beginning of each half and after we have switched, it's a good practice to to introduce yourself to the second half coach you'll be working with as well. Take the opportunity to remind the coach of the officials restricted area that officials need to work in along the sideline. You may hear this several times throughout a season. He didn't call it way, that way in the first half. This is a common phrase after switching that you may hear from a head coach. If or when it happens, know your response. Always be professional. Let the coach know that you're going to call the game according to the rules as you understand them, regardless of how they were called in the first half. Always be professional. Never should we throw another official, quote, under the bus or talk negative about an official, especially the official that was working the sideline in the first half. Always be professional about our coworkers. We should always be mindful when we're switching from first to the second half about any penalties that have already been called against the coach. This could include examples such as sideline interference that have already been called, uh, any unsporting acts. You may not have called the first one, but after you switch sides, you will be the one dealing with the second one if you called it. This should not be a deterrent to not call anything, but just know your situation and know that if you do have a second call, against a head coach, you will need to deal with it and know the enforcement and the penalties that go along with it. A few other remembers. Know that it's not just working the same position on the other side of the field. They are different positions. They do come with different responsibilities. One position comes with the chains, the other one doesn't. One has the primary responsibility of counting defense. They have different positions for different situations on the field. They have different places where you line up, for example, on kickoffs different mechanics to do for a measurement. So know that they are different positions, not just switching sides. It doesn't really matter which position you start or finish on, just work this out with your partner. But as we've discussed, be consistent and make sure you're always referred to the entire game as the position listed in Arbiter. The wing starting the second half of the 
game whose coach has the option for the second half kickoff should be responsible to know the coach's decision. If needed, go find the coach and ask him what he'd like to do. Be consistent. Judge each half fair and be consistent for both coaches. And even when you switch sidelines, be consistent. Don't let different coaches influence you into different calls. Have fun at switching at halftime. View it as an opportunity to get to know multiple coaches and different staffs. It can be fun. Recognize some games it will be harder switching, while other games it will be a relief or a welcome switch to go from one half or one sideline to the other. Take the opportunity to know both positions very well and working on the differences. And lastly, work hard in both positions and have fun and enjoy officiating. That's the end of this video. Thank you for your time. All other mechanics that we use in the state of Utah as approved by the joint board should be those taught in the game officials manual. These manuals are sent every other year with our manuals on even years. If you need a copy of the manual, you can order one at nfhs.com. Have a great season and we look forward to seeing you on the field.